All right, cool. So um, I was talking to one of my buddies and she said she she actually, I know her from when I used to work at Gold's Gym mm -hmm. in McAllen. It's a town down where I'm at and you can kind of see already the pictures already starting to pixelate because the, the light outside is going down. Yeah. Um, but I, I messaged her because she's now living in Amsterdam and she said she saw you. And I was like, are you serious? Wait, yeah, she met you. She met you. She's like, I met uh, Jeff in Amsterdam. And I'm like, that is doesn't, it, what? Huh? Is it steady? Yeah, Sadie. How the hell did that happen? That's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> oh my God. Isn't that so crazy? What the hell? Yeah, I was like sitting across the table from her. And she came up to you or uh, she didn't tell me the whole story, but I was messaging her earlier so, and she was like, yeah, so I went to Amsterdam and there was like a meetup. I was like, I'm going to go. And then like SETI knows somebody in common. And so she shows up and we just start like talking like no big deal. And then like halfway through, I just realized now she mentions your name. And I was like, how do you know Daniel Tapia? Right? Yeah. And right. Like, what are the odds that you're so famous that like halfway around the world, somebody goes, I grew up in the same city as Daniel Tapia or something like that. And yeah. she brings up your name and like, that's fucking weird. I thought that was the weirdest thing too. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jeff was in Amsterdam and he didn't say anything. I didn't say nothing. That's so funny. I thought it was hilarious. Um, I thought it was the funniest thing alive. Um, I just thought it was hilarious. So um, we're going to, we're already on live. So let's just, um, Jeff, we've already been talking a little bit. So kind of give us a little bit of backstory for, for us, for the people that don't know about you. Now I can go days and days and days about talking about you, but it was so funny how we first met. Where did we first meet? Ed? It, was it AdCon or at Funnel Hacking Live? So did we meet at AdCon 1 or at AdCon 2? Two? 2, 2. Did you go to AdCon Ad 1? I went to AdCon 1, yeah, but I don't think like we like talked or whatever. No, no, I didn't go. I didn't go. Didn't so go. Where did you stay at AdCon? What, like, who did you stay with, and like, what did you do? AdCon one, I stayed with Nat and uh, John something. I totally forget his last name. I remember his Facebook profile. Um, and like four or five other people is like part of like that crew, right? Like from AdCon one and all that. Yeah. And um, and then we all ended up doing like a group chat. And then McKinsey was there, I remember. And then like four or five other people. And then we ended up going to AdCon two and the same crew that went there and then that time we got like a massive mansion or something like that that was like 30 minutes away that was too far um and yeah. then i think you and i actually synced up at the click funnels house right or no no you didn't go to the click funnels house did you no 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 i was with jr and and some like some e-commerce guys okay yeah so i didn't go there so we hung out in the adcon two mansion right Right. And that's when you and Jared were taking your photos in the bay. Back that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, oh, man, I think Jeff is going to bring up the idea <laughs> that we were baby lotion each other outside. Yeah, that was awkward. That was awkward. It um, was hilarious. It was hilarious. Yeah, that was weird. It's like, what are those two beefcakes doing? Oh, okay. And then I just shut the curtains. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I think it was like December 2016, January 20, 2017. That's when I started like my Facebook ads journey. Right. And that's right. when... So what happened? Okay, back. Tell me a little bit of backstory because I remember back. we were talking a little story about you, your girlfriend at the time, a dog, yeah. and your parents. Yeah. Okay. So uh, my goal in life when I was like mid twenties, like you're always like, where am I supposed to be when I'm thirty? And I was supposed to be like a consultant, like a Lean Six Sigma uh, strategy consultant, and like I got accepted to like a. Uh, MBA program in Washington, St. Louis. I was at University of Chicago, and I ended up getting a three-month internship turned 18-month internship at Intel. And I only studied like strategy and marketing and operations, like like Lean Six Sigma consulting, like from from client to customer to like the so sales operations the whole thing, right? Yeah. And after I I essentially like got kicked out of Intel because I stayed an 18-month internship was supposed to only be three months, but whatever. And so I went back to my MBA school and I got poached to work for Ericsson. And when I got to work for Ericsson, I was like, this is my forever company. Like the first girl you fall in love with, right? Like that's it, this is it, nothing else. And then in three months, I got fired and then they hired me again. And then three months later, I got fired, then they hired me again. And then three months later, they fired me. So in nine months, I got fired three times from the only real job I ever had. The girl that I was dating said, I am breaking up with you and I'm moving to India, right? And then uh, I had to move out of my apartment 
and the car lease was up. And so I literally, I was like 31 or 32. I had gone from, oh my God, I'm like the Lean Six Sigma strategy consultant. I've got the bomb ass job and I was traveling, like I was gonna fly to Switzerland and stuff like that or Sweden. And then moving back home to live in my parents' spare bedroom and being an unemployed 31 year old. And like, I could not find a job at all. Like the economy was booming, but nobody wanted to hire me. And I remember I spent like my, my birthday flying across the country, trying to like interview at different jobs where I had some connection. And it was like, no, 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 all the way through. And I tell you what, when the universe says life is gonna suck for like three months, there's no fighting it, like life is gonna suck. Um, but then I ended up like moving back into like this office and I said, what the hell am I gonna do? So I called back like some old customers when I built websites, like everyone in the digital marketing space built websites, right? Right. And I called and was like, hey, did you want another website? They go, yeah, great, fine, perfect, let's do it. And um, after like my third or fourth website, I finally felt confident enough to put digital marketing on my Facebook page. And then it was like Dan Henry, Dan Henry, Dan Henry, Dan Henry, like straight forever. And for like 90 days, I ignored it. And on the 91st day I bought, and it was like Christmas or something like that. I said, fuck it, let's do it. I was in a Starbucks and stuff like that. Um, and then January of 2017, I officially started my journey. And that's how you and I got synced up. And that's how I ended up meeting you, uh, McKinsey, Sema, uh, Nick Robbins, JR, yeah, like that whole crew. It was like Dan Henry's crew, right? right. Um, but like the first part of like my Facebook ads journey is literally everything like was shitty and horrible and the worst thing in the world. Like how could you be 30 and get fired from the only real job you ever had three times? Like how does that even happen, right? And like the, the, the details behind that is like, I had like a golden parachute. So it kind of sends it to fire. So I'd be on a list, I didn't know. I get there, the division was gonna be laid off. I was assigned that division, so I was getting laid off. And I was walking out, HR would be like, just kidding and like switch out the paperwork, right? And that happened once, that happened twice, then almost happened a third time. But after the third time, I was like, I'm like emotionally spent, I can't deal with this anymore. Um, but it's been like a really weird journey. Um, and it only really turned around because like, you know, like the crew, like people like you and McKinsey and stuff like that, like you really need that community and that culture and like the ability to have that conversation, which I wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, but yeah, so the basic idea is like, I was supposed to be like that strategy marketing consultant. Like I've got the student debt for it. You know what I mean? Right. But it, life didn't work out that way. So I don't even know if I answered your question, but that's like the basic idea. Yeah, you did. So I kind of wanted to see like where you were, what were you doing before? Cause like, um, when I met you, it was so funny. Cause I was like, who's this lengthy tall dude kind of looks like if we're, if I was in school again, it would be, he'd be the frat guy. Yes. I'm a frat guy. 100%. Yeah. It just so happened that both of us were in a fraternity as well as yep. Andrew Cruzy. Cause I was like, dude, for some reason, remember we were walking down the street to go get, um, freaking sandwiches it was like six miles away it felt like yeah. we were walking forever to go get sandwiches and i'm like all right man what is this, this tall dude and then there's another tall dude which happened to be ryan yeah I'm like, you guys are talking together they're a little bit in the back let me see what's going on and so when i was talking i was like man this guy has to be like some type of ceo type by the way you talked i was like yeah. this is crazy i don't even <laughs> and yeah. when, when you were telling me all this stuff i was like huh <laughs> that's pretty cool yeah, so that was like the basic idea. And for anybody watching, um, he's talking about how in like, it was AdCon 2 and we stayed at like this mansion. Um, and like there are people in that house that are doing like $100,000 a month that are now yeah. doing like 300 grand a month, like absolutely like amazing crew. Um, yeah. And it was like you, me, and like two or three other people and we're just walking along. And the weird part about like, when you find tribe, that's the term, all of a sudden like it syncs up. And like yeah. all of us have like the same background, like we're all in fraternities. Like we all did someone okay in college and like, you know, like life happens, right? Yeah, um, right. And Andrew's got that story. I've got that story. I think you have the same story. Ryan has right. the same story. Um, and now all of a sudden, like I've got a Facebook group with like 19,500 people, which I don't even understand anymore. It's like, uh, yeah, like I've got uh, master classes every two weeks, which is crazy. I got one coming up with Steph Signs. We're doing yeah, this. All that. Um, I've got two pitch meetings next week. Uh, with another shopping mall and a massage spa. So like, it's like weird how life is turning out, but yeah. A shopping mall. So what kind of like, what kind of, um, like what kind of contract would that be looking at? Or what yeah, would so you be doing? That, that's the interesting part. Like, because I have like this like strategy background from the books, right? It's not like I earned my space. I'm just sitting on giants, right? Um, yeah. Like what I found is that most people 
uh, when you talk, like when you're saying like buy my Facebook ads, buy my marketing program, stuff like that, they immediately go, no, I don't want it. Like not going to happen. And even if they do, they argue it down so much. But what I found is that when people have problems, they would pay unlimited money to solve those problems because like yeah. for some reason, like that's their number one problem. Like I can't accomplish my goal because of X and I don't know how to solve it. So that's why I'm not accomplishing my goal. That's their number one problem. And so um, one of my, one of the ladies that refers me business, was like, I know this lady that was a marketing manager shopping mall, you should pitch them. I was like, great, fine, perfect, let's do it. And so I've got uh, this like whiteboard area. There's numbers in the room, but it's fine. And like, that's where, that's my pitch room, right? Like the strategy sessions and all that whiteboard, big blocks, stuff like that. And I've done it so many times that like at one of the chamber of commerces, some guy was like, you should talk to Jeff. And then the lady was there was like, you should talk to me. I'll introduce you to Jeff. And that's the lady that I pay referral fee to. Um, and it turns out it's a marketing manager of like one of the big shopping malls that's seeing like a downturn in business, which is normal for shopping malls up and down, right? Um, and she's like, look, I really don't want to buy Facebook ads. I said, great, because I don't want to sell you Facebook ads. I want to know about the number one problem when it comes to your business. And so we did the onboarding session. I treat just like a dentist's office or a doctor's office. Like what's wrong with your knees? What's wrong with your teeth? What have you tried to do? What are your symptoms? Like all that stuff, like literally like asking them 20 questions. And at the end of that, like the way plastic surgeons do business is you say, I understand your problem. Like you repeat it three or four times. You say, I think I have a program that can solve this problem. Do you want to see how it works and how much it costs? And everybody says yes. And so that's like permission to pitch. And so I ended up pitching this shopping mall and like they're actually, I didn't know this. I just thought it was like a shopping mall, right? It's just like a lady, a shopping mall. Turns out like they're part of like a trust that has like 19 other shopping malls all in the state of Florida. And the shopping mall itself has like 35 businesses in there. So like, Right. Like this could be like the whoop, moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so like there's e I'm on email change with like people who like have like like CMO and CO and CEO on their names. I was like, <gasps> right. <laughs> so, like, yeah, right. It's super exciting, but it's it's a shopping mall. Um, and like I've got my hypothesis to like what they want to buy and like like they don't want to buy Facebook ads. They want solutions to their problems. And right now, like they've got like five or six empty spots. The problem with that is like that's their overhead or their margin, their profit, like five or six out of 50 is like a big number. That's like, they're taking a 10% hit that they don't want to. Right. So they're trying to find businesses that are okay with low foot traffic. And it turns out there are a lot of businesses that are okay with low foot traffic, like digital marketing companies and WeWorks and conference rooms and things like that. And oh, so there, so, so let me just kind of understand this. I, I think probably someone coming in after is not going to understand the, yeah. like, the terminology. Yeah. So like, but foot traffic is basically people coming in the door. Um, and so like you're saying like digital marketing agencies don't really need people coming through every single day. They're okay with just um, paying the fee to sit there. Correct. So like right. when you know like a WeWork, right? Like the businesses that are there are not dependent upon people walking in and browsing. Like yeah. digital marketing company, you need somewhat quiet space, like maybe three or four people in a room. And so right. it's perfect for places that have bad parking that have low foot traffic and don't want people coming to the store. So I'm like, all right, great. So people like Jeff, that's the hypothesis in my head. And so I ended up winning this contract and they've yet to pay. So I'm not doing any work, right? right. Um, but yes, we're in, I'm like, great, where's the check? Um, but I got it because I didn't talk about Facebook ads. I talked about like the, the onboarding documents was the biggest problem that they're having, like customer research. I'm um, targeting the potential customers, figuring that whole thing out and presenting people um, from that customer research and offer that they cannot refuse. And so like getting like the type of businesses that want that environment. Um, and so that was like really interesting, which I would not have uncovered if I walked in and said, let me sell you Facebook ads. Right. So my philosophy, especially like in this room has always been like, let me solve your number one problem. Usually their problems are related to customers, clients or money, which right. Facebook ads solves. So like, that's like something that I think most Facebook ad agencies like miss out is like, yeah, let me sell you Facebook ads when it really should be. Let me use Facebook ads to solve your problem. Um, right. But because of it, now I've got like a bike shop, a car wash, shopping mall, a couple of chiropractors like everybody, a dentist coming up, um, maybe a massage spa that has three locations. So like things like that. It's like super exciting. Um, but a lot of it is because of like, I've got a book somewhere by Ryan Levesque. Yeah, the Ask one? Yeah, the Ask book. Um, yeah. Shit, it's somewhere. Like, now this is embarrassing. Here we go. So like this is the book that like powers my customer research. So like anybody watching this, like just buy it. It's like nine bucks or free. And the end result is like you never have to write your ads ever again. You will get your potential customers writing your ads for you. So that's always pretty cool. Um, and I'm kind of like just filling up.
There you go. What? I'm just kind of like, right? I'm just like still talking. So, you know. <laughs> Are you breaking up a little bit? Internet lagging. Oh my God, that's horrible. Oh no. Yeah, you were like mid, you were like straight in there. I don't, but it's, I don't know, maybe I'm lagging, but I don't see you anymore. No, it's probably me because like I got like the largest internet package ever and it okay. still hasn't kicked in yet. Um, oh. So we're going to see what happens. Hopefully it's fixed before my masterclass tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Yeah. 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 Let's see. Someone said great stuff, guys. Let me see. I don't even see who's com who's commenting when I'm using BeLive. I don't see who's who's commenting. Can you see? Yeah. Let me take a look. Hold on. Let me take a look before we, we transition. Huh? Jay Jackson. Uh, Jay. Jay is the man. Jay Jackson. Yeah, 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 Jay. Oh, He's yeah, I know this. This guy's on his way. Yeah, yeah, I see I see him in, in Get uh, Clients now. Yeah. Get Clients. Hey, so, Jeff, walk me through, because uh, I remember what it was like to get my first client. Okay, oh, so walk God. me through the process to get your first client and what the experience was, because I know some people right now are like, um, so you see the group, it's, it's um, Facebook ads for fitness professionals and gym owners, right? Yeah. But uh, as I know, um, most gym owners and personal trainers want that little side business, just kind of fuel their passion, yep. um, myself included, right? And it was like, you know, I want to do this a little bit, but I don't know where to start. And what am I, what can I expect from like a new client or what, sh what should I do? What did you do? You know, yeah. so so I want to hear your story behind like how you got your first client, what, what, what industry yeah. and um, what was the experience? So I, I did the curious student like every Dan Henry student does. So like if you go back on my wall, January 2017, you can see like the curious student which is like, hey, everyone, take a Facebook ads course. I want to do Facebook ads for free, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I got like 10 people saying I'm interested. None of those turned into customers or clients. None of them. They were yeah. all like big balls of frustration and they didn't take it seriously. I didn't know what I was doing. So I don't like really include that. Right. Like they couldn't even like they weren't even doing Facebook, much less Facebook ads, but like whatever. Right. And so my first client was probably Scott Cohen, his Cohen chiropractor, I've known him for like 15 years, because he saw that post, and then we didn't talk for like four months, and then all of a sudden he's like, can you do Facebook ads for me? I'm like, thank fucking God, right? So I charged him like 500 bucks, and that didn't even like cover the ad spend, but it was a good test. And that was the first time I saw stuff line up. Like we did the $21 special, and then the landing page, the thank you page, the text notifications, and then he called me and said, this person called me and they're coming in tomorrow. I was like, oh my God, it worked. It was like the first time ever that anything worked. And so that was like kind of like my first client, but not really. But it was like really, really weird to be asking for money and asking for a check and things like that. The downside of your first client is you will always think they're the most amazing person in the world, that you have to bend over backwards, that you're getting married. And it's no matter what, it's because of you not doing a good enough job. Not them, it's your fault, right? That's never the case. That's almost never the case. Like your first client usually is like the worst client. You just don't know it yet. Like imagine like dating your first girlfriend again. You're like, I've grown, I've grown so much. That's not a good idea, right? Yeah. It's the same way with your first client. Um, but my first best client, like the first one where I pitched correctly, where I uh, showed the plan correctly, where I onboarded correctly, like the first part of me solving problems, not selling a Facebook ads program was the bike shop. And I like... Like how on the inside, how did you get to that bike shop? Like, cause I, you know, I, I'm not one of those people who's gonna be like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna go look for a bike shop to go pitch to. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I found that like when I take that approach, it always bombs for me. Like in right. my soul, like my bones say, like don't pitch, right? Right. Um, and so what I did is I just go to chamber commerces, like chamber commerces, BNIs, meetups, event rights, like wherever clumps of people are going that have problems you can solve and are willing to pay for the results you can deliver. That's like my, my philosophy. And right. so when I was like desperately looking for clients, that's where I would go to, like Chamber of Commerce is being nice. And you go and you meet and greet, you be a normal person. Yeah. Hey, my name is Jeff, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, um, what, do you, what do I do? So thank you for asking, I'm super psyched to tell you. I do a Facebook ads agency, I'm starting a Facebook ads agency, growing a Facebook ads agency, whatever. Like your philosophy when it comes to growing your Facebook ad agency, whether you're a gym owner or a personal trainer client, like if you're looking for that client relationship, you want to be a normal person first that just so happens to do Facebook ads. Yeah, and just that, so happens. Yeah, just so happens. Like, just like uh, you want a roofer you can talk to, 
not necessarily the most best amazing roofer. Like, you know that you don't need expertise. You need a normal person to have a normal conversation and then they will solve the problems. And so that was really my philosophy, like go there and you can do like 90 days with a cold calling and cold emailing, cold door knocking in about 30 minutes. And you say hi to everybody. Hey, my name is Jeff, starting Facebook ad agency. And then you don't pitch. That's it, yeah. right? Like just like a doctor lawyer account doesn't like, I desperately want to do your books. Let me do your books. They don't talk like that, right? Right. And so you want to build an agency just like your parents think that they should have, which is go out, be a normal person, have a conversation. It just turns out there's a problem you can solve. You figure out a way to charge for it. And so that was like really my approach. And I ended up meeting um, the bike shop guy at a chamber of commerce, which was pretty cool. And we had a normal conversation and his basic language is Spanish. My basic language, our first language is English. So there's always like that, like miscommunication, but we laughed about it and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then we didn't, like there was no follow up on my part. There's no follow up on his part, but he ended up just, I'm, my suspicion is looking me up on Facebook because for the vast majority of people, they're like, you're the Facebook guy. I'm looking up on Facebook makes total sense. Like you won't right. buy pastries from a skinny chef. You won't get personal training classes from a fat trainer. Like that's right. just how your brain works. Right. Right. So at this point I had been documenting my Facebook ads journey enough. Or I did like, and anybody watching this can like go creep on my page. Like, I posted twice a week and I had like introspective thinking and I made posts that made sense and kept people up to date. So I was literally building up like my biography. So they didn't have to think I was suspicious. They just read the post and all of a sudden they were like cool with it. Um, and then he reaches out to my referral person who goes to the chamber of commerce is more like I go with her type thing. She brings him in. I do the pitch and I said, well, Mr. Johnson, you're probably wondering how much this program costs. And he goes, yes. I said, well, when I was at Intel, you could hire me out for six months. And it costs a quarter of a million dollars, but nobody cared because they were getting lead sales and ROI, which is what you want. But I'm not going to charge you a quarter million dollars over six months. Uh, if you go to New York style Mad Men agency, uh, you'd have to probably pay about 150K up front uh, before they even talk to you on the phone, but I'm not going to charge you that. Um, if you're going to downtown Miami to pay for someone else's Biscayne Bay views, and by then I sell a drywall, right? So it's kind of like a joke on that. Um, yeah. They charge you probably 55 grand. Um, and not guarantee their work. So this is what I'm going to offer you. I offer you 30 custom opportunities guaranteed. I offer you blah, 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 blah. Month to month, no long-term agreement. You pay $2,900 and then we'll take it from there. And he said, okay. And I was like, <gasps> like, like inside, like, I just, oh, wait, did somebody just say, okay. But I had to like outside be like, great. I'll just like saunter on over. And at this point, like I had like my laptop, which had all of like the, the fresh book stuff. So I had to like take out my camera and like click, 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 right? Cause I was recording it and like bring it over and type it in. Um, but he said yes. And at that point in my life, I was like, I felt like I had lied, cheated and stole. Like, like I had convinced a random stranger who had looked me up on Facebook, met me like a normal person to pay me real life money for something I would have done for free three months ago. But that's mm -hmm. part of like the Facebook ads journey. And whether like you're a personal trainer running ads for gyms or a personal trainer looking to run ads, very often when you start your personal training journey, that's the same idea. Like, I can't believe somebody is paying money to do this. I just work out anyway. I'm just talking to you the whole time. We're friends and I can't believe you're paying me. But that's how this whole thing works. And so like to answer your original question, like the thoughts, feelings and emotions were originally like disbelief. Like, I can't believe somebody is paying me money. Like I saw it on like my mints.com app. And I was like, this can't be real. So I don't yeah. go into like chase and be like, is this real? Um, and I knew that it worked because Scott Cohen, like the tech worked. Um, but it was just like absolutely mind blowing nuts. And I, I imagine it's the same feeling of like, if you're like, you're a personal trainer and then somebody says, yeah, I'll pay your rate. And you're like, Oh no, let me give you a discount, please. Let me. <laughs> right. But that's like, that's not how it's supposed to work. You're supposed to make right. enough money to where you can focus on their problems. Um, and that was probably like, I think 12 months ago now, maybe 14 months ago. And since then that one bike shop has been with me since then has consistently charged more and more and gotten better results. Like last month, I think he made like $12,000 in bike sales because of us, which is like absolutely crazy. Right, um, right. And uh, yeah, so like if anybody watching this, like the first thing that happens when you get your first client or even like talking to your first client, the first thing that happens like in your soul and your bones, your body will force you to bring that dollar down all the right, time. Right. So what I do is I write it on the board. Like it's really hard to write 300 because you can just add an extra zero and then it's three grand and then it's like, okay, right? 
but if you say 300, you can't say 3,000, right? So it was just like very easy to like just round it up and then cross down and put 2,900 or something like that. Um, and so like the way I learned to work around my flaws as like a person learning to pitch and things like that was to write everything down, have the same pitch and shut the hell up. Like very often when you're nervous, you fill in the blank and the person's just waiting for you to lower your price and you're like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Um, and so once I learned how to pitch correctly, like all that internal emotions of excitement and nervousness that was on the inside. And it's been like crazy ever since, like, like I have a car wash that has like eight locations now and pays like a lot of money every month. I serve as like CMO, that's chief marketing officer outsourced. I've got like 118 students and a huge Facebook group. And like people come in on a daily basis just to hear me yell at them. Like they just like, Jeff, just yell at me for a bit and then I'll go do stuff. I'm like, you got it, yelling session. Let's get this fucking thing started. Um, <laughs> And all of it is because like when I got started, I realized that like you, as a human, like you're not built to do an agency, you're built to survive, not thrive, right? You just gotta recognize that your brain is gonna lie to you a lot. Um, and that's why you write stuff down, that's why you use a whiteboard, that's your record sessions and pretty soon people pay you a lot of money for it. So that kind of idea. Was that, that's like, that was a long yeah. answer. No, that's that's totally, um, <laughs> I think that was pretty intense. Um, and it's very, uh, I guess, understanding to what you were supposed to like say to what the question was. Um, so, what did you like? Share, like, can you share with me like what you? Because I remember what I did when. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I remember what I did physically um, when I got my first client to say um, yes to fifteen hundred a month. Um, I remember like. I remember like it was so funny because I, I had asked him, I was like, you know, it's a uh, 1500 month. And he goes, okay, that's cool. Where do I pay? And I remember like, like muting the phone and like, yes, I was in my car and I was like, yes, let's go. I, <laughs> you know, I was jumping up. I was like, holy crap. How do I, how do I get them to pay now? Like, right. I have to figure out, like, I don't even want to get him to pay. I just want to turn off the phone and just accept the idea that he said, yes, I don't even care about the money right now. All I care about is that he said, yes. Yep. Yep. Like the money didn't even, it was so funny because like, I was like, crap. I, now I have to ask for, I have to ask for a credit card. Like he said yes yep. to money or they said yes to money. Yep. Um, how did, how did you, what, what did you do when you first, like when he first said, oh, all right, let's do it. Yeah. So it was simply like that. He goes, okay. And then I went great. And so like the best part is like, so I've got like the desk. So this is like the, the table, right? Everybody sits in. Right. And so my desk was like over there at the time. And so what happened is he said yes. And I had to walk away from him. And so my face was like, holy oh, fuck. He just said yes. And you can see it in the recording because I'm walking towards the camera. Right. And so I like, I had to like cut that out because I always send the recording, but it was literally like a, oh my God, like you do not believe it's happening. And like you see, you know the concept of money and you know you have to pay people money, but you've never had to say you owe me money for the thing that I'm going to do for you. Right. Like very often we hide behind the fact like, no, no, I got to charge you because like I've got a house or because I've got suppliers or because I've got stuff like that does not prepare you for I'm going to charge you because I'm going to do you a thing. Because up to this point in our careers and our life journey, we've done things for friends, right? Yeah. Because you're a cool person. Now we're understanding of the client relationship where it's just me, Jeff Miller, I'm going to charge you for an end result, um, just like doctors, lawyers, accountants do. Um, but it was literally like, like that type motion. Like I just walked to, and like, I wasn't prepared for it because up to that point, everybody said no, or they politely said like, I'll think about it or whatever. And I was the first person that said no at 2,900, which was the highest rate at that point that I charged. Um, and so I didn't even have like fresh books, like the tab open. My camera was plugged into my computer, so I had to unplug everything. Like my computer half froze. I had to like open it up again, close it, open it up again, bring up fresh books. He gave me the credit card, like awkwardly waiting for me to like swipe it and I'm like typing it in, like I'm gonna steal the information and stuff like that. Right. And the charge went through and I was like, Great, I'll get started tomorrow and keep a lookout for an email. He goes, Awesome. And he just walks out. And I was like, Is that how it's supposed to be? And that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Like, you're not supposed to continue the conversation. Like, this is the plan, this is the program, do you want it? Yes, okay, give me money, we'll get started tomorrow. Um, and he said yes, I freaked out, but for the first time I kept it inside, right? Which is like what I've learned to do. Um, right. But for anyone going on like their Facebook ads journey, you have to understand that 
you're going to F up a lot. Just like the first time you went to the gym, like you didn't bench press correctly then, you didn't squat correctly, you didn't deadlift correctly. Like everything is injured the first time you deadlift, right? Like it's just, it's going to happen. But you have to go back again and again and work through like the muscles that are unbalanced. You have to work through and with the squats because you didn't know that you have to like, like straighten your spine and so you like slouching over, like it's going to suck. But after like the third or fourth pitch session, stuff lines up, the universe repays you and you're documenting your journey. So they're going to look at you on Facebook anyway. And then people pay you money, which is still weird for me, to be honest. Like, like my car wash guy is coming later in the month and going to write me a big fucking check. And I don't understand it. Like people do it yeah. and I'm kind of okay with it. So, right. It's so funny. So, okay. So now, um, so we walk through your first client, where you were, where you came from, uh, where you came from, where you're, where you went to now, where are you like kind of at right now? Like kind of just a ballpark, just so people can get like that vision to see like, okay, where I'm at right now is not where I'm always going to be. What, what, what was that for you? Like, what's the current right now for you? That was like, Holy crap, this is way more than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. So that first ballpark. feeling of like this, right. That first like feeling of a hockey stick where like the world lines up, you're in the zone, everything is cool. You just got to like run a little bit faster and all the numbers line up. So that was probably like six months ago when uh -huh. I ended up meeting my car wash guy who came in through a referral. That's how it's always worked for me. I've never run a Facebook ad that's gotten a Facebook ad client. They're just people right. that I happen to know or know of me. And I just right. meet them in person, all this like Dr. Lawyer accountant type businesses. And um, comes in, I give the same pitch, except instead of charging 2,900, I charge 4,900. And he goes, okay. I was like, all right, great. And so he signed and he said yes and he paid. And then he came back a month later and said, hey, I think this is working. How about another location? I said, you got it. And then he came back a month later and said, how about another location? I said, you got it. It was the same at, exact thing. So at 4,900 4, each? Yeah, there's more. And after a while, he goes, Jeff, you know, like, I don't think you know who I am. And I was like, I have no idea. I think you're just like a normal guy. And it turns out he's like the former vice president of real estate for Marriott. And he's really good at setting a franchise. And that's what he's doing with these car washes. And oh, he's wow. at like 100 before the end of next year. And I was like, I'm game. Let's do this, right? Yeah. Uh, and he said, could you do guaranteed customers? I said, what does that mean? He's like, look, when I'm doing these franchise packages, if I could say like, I, I need to say I have like, uh, like a, a sign provider and a guy who does my staff. And if I could say that you do my marketing and that you're guaranteeing the phone calls or walk-ins or customers, something like that, then all of a sudden I could pay you a lot more. I said, you got it. Let's figure it out. And then he wrote a check for 10 grand and then he did it again and then he did it again. So like all of a sudden, very, very quickly, my agency went from like 10 to 20 a month to like at one point we're doing 50K a month. It was like absolutely nuts. It's the same program, same pitch, same everything. It's just that I finally found like the person that is like my dream client or customer, which is somebody who's doing this. And I just like make it a little bit easier for them to do that. Um, and yeah, it's been absolutely nuts ever since. Like I do car washes in Woodlands, Texas. I do car washes in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I do two car washes in Miami, uh, two in North Palm Beach area, um, things like that. And it just works. And like the cool part about Facebook is you turn it on and turn it off again. You put money in, leads come out. Um, and because you're tracking everything, you can like phone calls work. Like I think yeah. I just like, yeah, like I just sent a phone call to my Bayside car wash, like right now, like stuff like that. Um, so like having those really cool tools and techniques works. Um, and another interesting part is like things like sneaky surveys, welcome text, soap opera sequences, like that automatic follow up, being able to prove that the sucker works is like what genuinely works most times. Um, which I didn't know about that. Like we weren't taught about kind of, but I just read my way and failed forward. Um, but yeah, like the weirdest part for me was doing these pitches one-on-one -on -one. people paying that was like level one, right? And level two was doing the same pitch to the same person and having him pay more and more and more each month. And he was yeah. psyched because he was getting that ROI. Um, and now I'm approaching like a new stage, which is saying it's no longer 2,900, but 3,900 or 4,900 and you're getting less. And so I'm experimenting with that idea and it'll probably happen with like the, the upcoming shopping mall massage parlor, which is they don't want me telling them what to do. Like they're higher like on that food chain they want something different. So like, I'm going to be testing a different program, things like that. Um, but it's been a really, really cool journey. And like the first acceleration of that was my car wash guy. So there you go. 
Wow, that's pretty. That's intense, dude. Yeah. And now, <clears throat> now, um, real quickly. So, not only have you grown the agency to up to up to fifty k a month, yeah. Also, grown a group and just created a following that's like, right? Diehard fans. Like, like I see that's your celebrity. It's in, it's insane. So like. I Talk to my- me about that. How did that go? And like, where, where was that to the next part of it? Yeah. So, um, January of this year, Andrew Crozy flies down from Ohio to Miami and yells at me for 45 minutes. It's like, yeah. Jeff, I'm coming to your office. I was like, okay. So he walks in. I don't know him. Just a normal guy. And he's like, Jeff, you need to start a group. And I was like, no. He's like, yes, you do. I was like, no. And he yells at me for 45 minutes. 45 minutes. I was like, fine. Great. Let's do it. So I wrote down everything. And I did like the Facebook version of what I was taught at Intel and Ericsson on how to like get people excited, motivating and things like that. Um, and I started my group March In March. It was like zero people. Like there was just nobody in my group because it was just empty. And it was actually Aubrey was like my second person in the group. I was just so ashamed of like having a group and I didn't know what to do with it. That yeah. Aubrey was like the second person in the group. And I was like, Aubrey, I have to invite somebody. I'm inviting you. Let's just figure this out. She's like, okay, no worries. Yeah. Um, and I opened the doors. And every day since I opened the doors, it's been about 100, 150 people a day just joining, just randomly. I don't know who these people are. I'm not doing any paid ads. All I'm doing is stuff in the group um, that makes it worth joining. And, you know, I ask questions and some people like I saw on the banner, a friend of a friend, let's do this. I've heard of you, things like that. And I'm like, I don't know who any of these people are. But I walk around Miami Beach, which is where I live, and like three people said hi to me. And I was like, I'm cool. And they're like, no, I know your face. I was like, I don't know you. They're like the interview. I was like, okay. Right. Like butt I didn't cheeks guy. Yeah. The um, guy with the butt cheeks. The guy with the butt cheeks on his cover photo. Um, yeah. and we're doing t-shirts soon. Like the, the first proof comes by tomorrow. So it'll be like, like a butt. And it says like ass fam as a hashtag and stuff. Yeah. Um, and, uh, we did an in-person event, me, Andrew, Steph and Arnie, and we got like 40 people in a wow. room. It was pretty cool. We all did a little presentation, things like that. I talked about customer research, but without any paid ads, we've gone from zero to 19,500 people. Um, it's probably going to hit 20,000 before the end of next week, um, which is absolutely nuts. It I have the, the, you're a part of the interview series. Like, you know, like these people like comments, engaging, like, how are they asking questions? Right. Right. Um, and like, I'll just bring up another tab. So the upcoming interview, uh, it's a dentist. He's got three dent. He's got three dental companies. He's based out of like Ireland or something to that effect. Um, and he and I chatted. Like, hit my calendar. Was like, yeah, I don't know who you are. Let's talk. He's like, you got it. So I showed him like two or three things about customer research. And he's like, Jeff, you should know what happened. I was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't know I fucked stuff up for you. He's like, quite the opposite. Like, I did what you said, and I turned about like five hundred dollars in ads into ninety grand. It was like, oh, okay. Come do you want to do an interview? And he's like, sure. So I put up the post and there's 195 people that want to be part of the interview. Yeah. And I'm like I'm still blown out of the water because <clears throat> I remember when I would get like 10 comments on my personal post and I'd be jumping up and down. Right. And now there's like 200 strangers saying, I want to watch your interview. Um, but it's been absolutely nuts. I think I figured out like the the Facebook group growth engine or whatever, like we're calling this now. I'm working on the details right, right. with Andrew. Like we're gonna start doing seminars and in-person events and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. but it's nuts. And there are people that that I have signed as like Facebook ads clients specifically because of the group. Like they've been seeing it, interacting with me, and they're like, Jeff, can you do my ads? I was like, sure, what do you do? They're like, we're a dentist company with like eight locations. I was like, what? Like no, no, you're Alex. What are you talking about? He's like, no, yeah. I'm seriously a dentist. I was like, okay, well, you got it. Let's do it. Um, and like what the, the weirdest part is like, I look at like the group insights. Like if you, if you're admin of a group, you can see like it's growth. Yeah. And like, I'm going back to March when I had zero people. And I'm saying this like half bragging, but half like, I still don't understand. Yeah. Right? Like it's been a fucking line like this, right? All the way through. And I genuinely believe that if you are starting your Facebook ads journey, you should have a group probably six to nine months in. If you're seeing some success for your agency, have a group because your learning will ex- like accelerate. You can mm-hmm. do um, like interview series, you can do customer research, you can do mini modules and turn this into like a dollar thing that makes a lot of sense. Um, 
but it's absolutely nuts. And I'll be connected to like the strangest people that like are absolutely insane on their own journey. Like there's one guy who like sold his web design agency for $1.3 million. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like I barely sold a website for like a thousand bucks. You can't do like a thousand websites. He's like, no, I only did five and I charge a hundred thousand dollars each. And I was like, what? How do you charge a hundred grand for a website? That doesn't make any sense. He's like, yeah, man, it happens all the time. It's like, okay, let's talk, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so it's been absolutely nuts. Like I ended up getting in touch with a guy named G-Day who's originally part of like FAA figure out clients. Okay. Um, and like I helped him figure out dentist ads a while ago. He couldn't quite figure it out. Turns out he was split testing too hard. And he disappeared for like six months. He comes back and now the guy's making like uh, one, two, what is it? What is 30K a month in figures? That amount, that amount per month. Um, five figures. By, yeah, 30,000 a month by arbitraging Facebook ads. Um, arbitrage, what do you mean? So he'll, he figured out how to run ads to get people to get Facebook ads clients. Um, and he's good at like the sales side and all that, taking all the training, joined Cat House course. Um, and instead of doing the actual contract, he just sells it. So like he'll sign somebody to 5K a month and then find a contractor to fill it for three. So that's his margin. So it doesn't do any work, right? He just does the sales side. And I had no idea that was even an option. I just thought yeah. you always had to do your Facebook ads, like me, right? Um, and so like the cool part about like having a group or growing a group is like this interview and things like that and learning. Um, and even whether it's uh, like Jay Jackson was watching earlier, he should have an interview series on like people who have drastically changed and transformed their life for the better. He could have an interview series of people who are becoming the next Olympic or Olympia. Mr. Olympia, I don't yeah. remember. You know what I'm talking about, right? I, I grew up when, um, uh, Ronnie, you're Coleman. not that old. Don't go there. You're not that. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Coleman, Ronnie, Ronnie, yeah, yeah. Ronnie Coleman. Yeah. So that was like my guy. Like when I was like in weightlifting, that was the guy. Like lightweight yeah. and stuff. And so like it would be super cool if Jay Jackson had his own interview series of people like that, or people who have figured it out or on their way, things like that. And that gets people more excited about buying Jay Jackson's services and Facebook ads. Kind of like what you're doing here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been absolutely nuts. I think like the keys to growing a Facebook group are that inner. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh, we're back. We're back. Okay. But I, I genuinely think that like if you are starting a group, you should be doing, you can hear me right or no. Yeah, let me let me write this on here just in case someone comes in just for the, the nuggets. Just the, the nuggets. So if you want to start and grow a group, this is the journey that I've been on and I'm not the expert in it. This is just like a summation of what I've done. You'll want to do customer research. So like what's your number one problem? Um, and then do an interview about uh, someone who solved that problem. And then you want to do like some like type of training, like free or paid is fine. Mm -hmm. And doing those three things, your engagement shoots through the roof. Like when you do that launch post for that interview, you're going to have 200 people commenting saying I'm in, which is like a huge number of comments. Right. When you do customer research, there are people in your group that are on your spectrum purchasing that will tell you the problems they're having. Guess what? You can solve them. Um, and when you're doing the free training, they love you even more. And so, like, I'm going to show you this later, like the back end and all this stuff. Yeah. But the comments are like absolutely insane. Like, in the last 28 days, following that process that I just mentioned, we're looking at like, no, that's incorrect. That's, hold on. 60 days. I have to refresh. Yeah, oh, okay. like in the past like 30 days, there's been 15,000 comments and they all fall into one of those three buckets. One of them is an interview, right? Just like here. One of them is the customer research and the other one is the free training or the training itself. Right. Um, and because you don't have to worry about being an expert or like the value of blah, 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 just solve people's problems and they'll, they'll love you for it. And every single one of the comments, or at least the vast majority, follows one of those three buckets. And so whether if you're thinking about doing a group, you probably should. Um, you can do a pre-group on your personal page, like just treat it as a group, like do the yeah. launch, post the interviews, all that, and you can build up that following. And then like one day you throw them all into a group. Um, and I think Facebook wants people in groups, not so much right. like on pages, right? Um, but for anybody watching this, like the Facebook group has been absolutely amazingly fulfilling, solved and filled in like the missing gaps of my knowledge. And now I get to like, People say hi to me and I don't know who they are. So, you know, whatever. It's it's super fun. Yeah. Which one would you, if you had to choose one and just say, this is the one, which one would you choose? The agency or the group? The agency is what keeps me honest. So like I, I would not have any like weight to my words if I didn't have an agency, right? Like I genuinely believe if you want to be a great personal trainer, yeah. you should be 
personal trainer first and then sell books second. Correct. And so um, I think that's what makes people grounded. And I think that's what keeps um, their trainings like up to speed. And you, you've met people that are like six or 12 months behind Facebook changes. And you're like, you don't have to do that anymore. And immediately when they start talking about seasoning their pixel, you know, they're a year behind, right? Like they're just a year behind. Um, and so I haven't like, talked about messenger bots. They're like behind. Right. Like you're like, mm, something's missing here. Um, and so I think keeping the agency or like having an agency keeps me honest and authentic. And I would choose the agency over the group every time because the agency has allowed me to do a group, um, right. not the other way around. Um, so things like that. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to see what tomorrow's interview is like with Sean O'Connor, who's got like 200 people already scheduled to be like in the interview. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, that kind of idea. That's pretty sick. So <clears throat> I was, when I, when I kind of, uh, when you told me about this thing, um, I actually started doing it a little bit and I made it, uh, it's kind of funny because in the, in the, in the marketing space, it's a little easier to charge um, a little more extra. Um, in the fitness space, it's a little different because there's no direct measurable r return on investment. However, I did use your your methods to your madness and my group has gone up and my the like I have sold more programs based yep. on that without having like stress, which is more important than like most people like try to create like a, what I did when I first started was I created the whole course because yep. I created a whole course, try to go out and sell it. Nobody wanted to buy it. Correct. The way that you're doing it is totally different. And um, it's so cool because um, if you haven't read the book Launch for everybody from um, Jeff Walker. Mm -hmm. I haven't. You haven't. Nope. You're doing what's called a seed launch. No shit. Okay, that's cool. I'm doing yeah. a thing. Awesome. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually in there. It's in his book. And it's like, uh, it's called the seed launch. And what you guys are doing, when I saw Andrew doing this and yourself doing this, I was like, Dude, this is the seed launch. And That's I was awesome. like, you ask and use the seed launch to uh, just promote your product. And like, it's like literally like exactly what you guys are doing. I'm like, what the heck? I didn't yep. even realize this. <laughs> so this is like specific to people in like the fitness space or gym owners or something like that. Like it's very, it makes total sense to have a program. And then it makes total sense to have a web version of that program. Like it's going to happen, right? Yeah. The mistake though is saying, I'm going to do a 90 day chest blaster. Or like this is 45 days to lose your belly fat or something like that. Right. And like your brain for some reason says you need a thing first and then you're going to go sell it. And that's right. fine. Go through the motions. I get it. You can't stop it. You're going to build your first thing and then it's going to suck. And then you're going to do the seed launch instead. That's just right. everyone's journey. Um, and that's what I did with my course. And that's what you do with yours. Um, yeah. But for anybody watching the basics of the seed course, you're saying, what's your number one problem? Great. I'm going to build something to solve that. I'm going to charge you money for it. Are you okay with that? And everybody says yes. Um, and then you end up having like, like live one-on-one -on -one sessions or live like hour long sessions with like the five people that bought the beta tickets or something. Yep. Put it up on a store and then you bundle it and then that's your course. And people yep. love it because you're not like value stuffing or like there's so much value. Shut up. I don't care about value. I just want my problem solved. And yeah. so you end up with a course that specifically solves people problems, solves right. people's problems that already has tickets sold. And so that's like, once I made that switch and I didn't know that was a seed launch. So that's like super awesome. Um, yeah. Numbers are like tick, tick, tick all the way up. So it's super fun. It's super cool. I thought that was amazing when I first, when I first heard you got, well, when I first did it and I got this book, cause someone had read, I think it was, um, JR, JR recommended it to me. He's like, Hey, go get this book. It's pretty cool. And then I heard Steve Larson talk about it again. And I'm like, all right, let me go get it. Um, yeah. yeah. And so I got it and he's talking about like a, a video series launch. And I actually did this primarily first and foremost to sell high ticket coaching packages, yep. his launch, his four video series launch um, style. And I've actually done it um, to sell high ticket programs. <clears throat> In fact, that's how I made my first uh, $7,000 online as a personal trainer was selling high ticket programs like this. Um, and then I'm like, yeah, I know, but that was kind of hard. That was kind of hard to do all that. And then he talks about the seed launch and I'm like, man, I've never seen it done like outside. And then I'm like, no, Jeff and Andrew are doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no way <laughs> they're doing it. So, um, I just thought that was super funny. So you should like, you should probably get it just so you can kind of see like, 
oh crap, I'm doing this already. Like, yeah, it's a thing. So yeah, it's for anybody right. watching this, like one of the challenges with a group is you don't know what to post, when right. to post, and how to keep people moving and engaging. Um, but the cool side effect of a seed launch, I guess that's what it's called, is huge engagement. Like you do a custom research post, 300 people respond. They're writing your live training. Comment you want the training. You got it. So now you got 600 comments. Right. You do an interview, 300 more comments. So you got like almost 1,000 comments. And when you get a lot of comments, that's Facebook saying you've got engagement. And when you got a lot of engagement, Facebook will send more people to you. Right. Um, and so I didn't know that was like the infrastructure, but that's the basic idea. That's the building blocks of a group. Um, and it's absolutely worked. And it's been a crazy, crazy, crazy journey. So like if I had to just kind of ballpark, if you had to ballpark it, income wise is the agency outpacing the group the agency the makes more money than the group but it's a lot more work effort energy um okay so the we're doing a master class and we sold 40 tickets at 97 dollars each so you can do the math right yeah um, and the cool part is like once you do a master class that's repeatable right right once you do the onboarding master class no, you don't there's have no go. delivery needed right correct the downside of an agency which is like normal for any business is that you have to keep delivering, have to keep doing all that. Um, but the agency will always be bigger than like the the courses, right? Or the Facebook group. Um, that's just how I like, how it fits in my bones. But whatever spins off from the agency goes into like the mini modules and stuff. Right. Um, and the really cool part is you get to do like, uh, like team teachings or joint ventures and stuff like that. And you yeah. get to share stuff. Um, and it's like, I think it's like the natural evolution. Like I got Sam Ovens course and he talks about like, you know, you're climbing that ladder. Um, and like there's level one, which is you do it for somebody. Level two, you do it with somebody. Level three, you teach somebody. Level four is you teach everybody. Um, and that's like Jeff's way of communicating it. There's more steps, but like you like, you keep climbing all the way up. Right. And it just kind of works. So it's super fun. I really, really enjoy it. That's really cool, man. So um, do you have any closing, I guess, do you have any closing um, thoughts, ideas, opinions, thoughts that you want to kind of share along with the group so that, or with me to help with anything um, that we covered here today? All right. So let's look at your group. Do you want to do this now? Yeah, let's do it. I mean, the best way to do it is to do it here, right? Okay. Yeah. Let's take a look at it. All right. So uh, Facebook ads, marketing and sales fitness for Cool. So, okay, so let me pull it up because you're like doing a Facebook au a group audit right now. So this yeah. would be great for people to get like a masterclass in less than eight minutes. Yeah. Okay. So, so the first thing that I see is like, you've got like the Rocky photo, right? Okay. But what I really want is something that stands out more, like almost symbolic or architectural -like, or archetypal like, like I've got a butt agency scaling secrets, right? Right. I don't think you need a butt. You need something that stands out hugely and immensely. Um, I understand that's what you were going for, but what I like to do is I like to screenshot that and then put it next to the suggested groups and does it stand out? Yes, no. If it does not stand out, throw it out and do something different. Say um, it again. So the, the most easiest, best way to get people in your group is by having a banner that stands out correctly. Um, and so if I'm ever really not sure if my banner stands out, I will just like drag it and put it next to the suggested groups and just like see how it looks. And if the banner is obsessively large and loud, yes. If you don't go, wow, that stands out, do a different one. Um, the second thing is that there should be some like text or logo of like what the group is and what it will help you achieve. Like um, agency scaling secrets, quit working your butt off. Cool, right? right. Um, Facebook ads for marketing and sales funnels, uh, Facebook ads for fitness trainers. Cool. Um, how to get your first 15 online customers in 90 days or less, something like that. Right. Um, the second thing is we should probably be doing customer research, which you've done before. What's your number one thing, right? So what's your number one problem, goal, fear, result, things like that. I do it every Monday without like intention of having a product online. Just do it every Monday. People will tell you problems that you need solving. So now you've got customer research. Um, the second thing is by doing, let's see, here we go. The second thing we should be doing is, um, no, wait, let me look. Here we go. And, okay. So maybe the question is, is it, is it, um, should you shut it down? Like when should you shut down a group and say like, this is it, like you should just do a different thing in all entirely. Uh, it's pretty rare, actually. So, like, uh, Nikki Van Sanden of the Influencers Facebook group, like, her group was 
Like she just couldn't have, the, she didn't have the managerial capacity. Like she goes to school and just didn't have the time, effort, and energy. So her group had like zero interaction for 60 days. Guess what? It was like, no, you just do, do a customer research post. You see like kind of a shame, people will find out. Nope, just do a customer research post, engagement shoots through the roof. And she launches a thing, people pay, and all of a sudden people want to do interviews with her. She gets stuff off Facebook and on Facebook, like stuff just works. So uh, very rarely does a dead group mean you should close it. It really just means you should be going back to the basics, which involves customer research, uh, launch posts, and doing interviews, um, and then things along those lines. So off the top of my head, um, there's five things you should be doing to drive the end result you want from your group, aside from the banner. The first is the number one thing. People will tell you right out of the gate. Um, and for example, with like the number one thing, I didn't know that, what is this called, bat wings or something like that? I didn't yeah, yeah, bye bye bat wings. Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing, right? But right. if five to 10 to 15 people have a bat wing problem, you can have a training to solve that. So like number one problem, have that on Monday. Um, number two, ask me anything, lunch and learn. Have a conversation, block out an hour, people ask, get to ask you questions. Doctor, lawyers, accountants do that. Great money maker, great business maker. Facebook has people do it. It's really, really cool, keeps you sharp. Um, number three is you should be launching a thing. Um, whether it's a free training, whether it's a paid training, $15, $97.49, whatever it is, launch a thing, engagement, shoot through the roof, let buyers be buyers, just get it done. And whether it's like um, uh, coaching sessions, group coaching sessions, whether it's PDFs or whether it's uh, intensely, like you have to do a lot of work for it, always be launching on Wednesday or always launch every week. Uh, Thursday is like a gimme, uh, a gimme, like by day, like stuff happens, forget about it, no big deal. But Thursday is like your break. Um, Friday is your interview. Sometimes if you've got an interview with enough heads up, have your launch post on Thursday for your interview. And the cool part is like comment to be tagged. Now you've got your interview. Um, so Monday is your customer research. Tuesday is your ask me anything, lunch and learn. Wednesday is your launch post. Uh, Thursday is your um, hype post for your interview or like interview launch post and Friday is your interview. Um, and sometimes you have to double up Friday. So you do like your, um, you do like your uh, actual training on a Friday, but you also have that interview like, you know, Monday, uh, the morning and the afternoon type setup, but it's worth it because your engagement shoots through the roof. Um, and I'm just doing those five things in my group and my engagement is at like 95%. Like it's such a huge number. Um, wow. And every single day I'm getting like a hundred people joining automatically. And the cool part is that everybody kind of eventually hates their group because you have to put all this effort and energy and not make any money with it. But if you're launching a thing, then you get paid to do it and you just feel better about it. Right. And, and the cool part about having the store, which is like all your trainings, is that when people ask dumb questions that you've already answered, not dumb on their part, just like you've answered so many times you think it's dumb, you have two mm -hmm. options. One is you ignore them or you hate them. Or second, you just say, look, this has already been covered in 90 minutes. Here's everything you get. It's 97 bucks if you hit, I'll refund your money. Um, and that's always been my stance with people asking me questions. And I think I've had like five refunds in total, right? Okay, fine, but I've also sold a thousand of these things, right? So it's definitely yeah. more. Um, and so if you are in the Facebook ads space when it comes to like fitness trainers or gym owners or something like that, go down your Facebook ads journey, understand that process, um, but then have a Facebook group because it's very much like whatever gets thrown out from your agency has to go somewhere. And either like you lose that right, knowledge right. or you wish you remembered it or you get to encapsulate it in a group and teach it. Um, and if you just did those five things, and I mean, how long does that take like 15 minutes of an alarm and just runs? Um, and then all of a sudden your engagement is going to be ding, 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 all the way up pretty darn quickly. Wow. That's like a whole hour's worth training in like five minutes. Yeah. Like uh, after this, like I've got like a, a 15, 20 minute session, but I'll show you the back end and what I'm doing. And you're going to be in a position where you go like, oh my effing God. Like I had no idea that like the universe is supposed to line up this way. Um, and it's really, really cool seeing like, every spike I've ever had of engagement shooting through the roof has been a launch post, an interview or an AMA or something like that. And so it's gotten to a point where I'm convinced all my engagement, all my growth is simply because of those five things. Everything else is like fall over or like leftover. So I'll show you later on, but it's, it's exciting. I think it's cool. Yeah, that's super exciting. Holy smokes, yep. holy smokes. I might have to help you out with uh, creating your first uh, webinar. Uh, yes, you do. Number one and number two, I I I feel like I should have a six pack, but it's not there. You know what I mean? It's just like it's 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 hiding. So yeah. it would be nice if you could solve I mean, that problem. But that you know. that problem has been solved. Ninety seven dollars. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I'm just playing with you. Um, but no, man, I've, I've had an amazing time with you for the last uh, hour we've spent. And um, I just wanted to close it off and let you know um, I appreciate what you've been doing for people. Yeah. What you've been doing for businesses and what you did for me. And I just got to say, you're just putting a big chunk of like change in the world and you're cool. making it. And so it's like, I think it's, it's amazing. And I just wanted to honor you for that. And, uh, um, with that being said, we're going to jump off here, guys. Let us know in the comments, make sure to hashtag after party. Uh, if you're coming in after and watching this particular training, hope we, uh, over delivered. I know Jeff did for me, so I hope it could, uh, it could be for you as well. Very so cool. with that being said, see y'all later. Bye.